Yes, in the name of Jesus, do what you would do. Marande de be shadaba. Horande de be ya 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 de. Horande de be debo shadaba debo pura masia. Horera ba debo shadaba ra ba ra ba ya pa. Horena ma de ba ba ya kore maseta ta ya ni ma ya ya. Horera ba debo shadaba ba debo si ba debo shadaba. Horande de bo pura ba ra ba ra. In the name of Jesus, we take strength from the Holy Spirit that we have been receive strength. Receive strength. In the name of Jesus, we receive strength. Receive strength. In the name of Jesus, for some trust in Moses, and some trust in Charis, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Yes, we trust in the Lord. That's why we have been gathered here. Lord, we have been gathered unto the man. We are gathered unto you. In the name of Jesus, speak, Lord. Strength, Lord. Speak, Lord. Present your sympathy, who will touch your every skin. I will speak upon your life, and I will speak upon your life, and in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you see yourself through the eye of God. You see you, you see you, you see you all, because that is the plan. In the name of Jesus, so I will put that in front of you, like that. I rebuke that sickness right now. I rebuke that uh, virus right now. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the fever right now. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the condition right now. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the condition. Whatever you are, we command to leave the body. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the industry. I command to leave. In the name of Jesus, go back to the shadow of the earth. I rebuke the body. And I receive it. I receive your healing. I receive your healing because by your stripes I am healed. I stand in your truth. I believe your word, and I receive my healing right now. In the name of Jesus, I stand in your truth. I believe your word. I receive my healing. Say, Lord, I stand in your truth. I believe your word. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for my eyes. The miracles that Jesus did, they were not given to me. So I'm not going to sacrifice the name of oh God. I receive my food right now. I receive my food right now, my sister. I receive my food right now, my sister. Let that be your confession. Say, I receive my food right now, my sister. I refuse to live with this condition. I refuse to live with this sickness. I refuse to live with this infirmity. I refuse to live with this affliction. In the name of Jesus, I was not born with it. In the name of Jesus, and I will not live with it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare, I declare, I declare, I declare over every part of my body. I declare. Over the seventy-eight organs in my body, yes, David. Say over the seventy-eight organs in my body. I speak life. I speak hope. In the name of Jesus, my body is functioning perfectly and in order. In the name of Jesus, no sickness, no pain, no pain, no sickness, no pain, no pain. Declare it right now, no pain, no sickness, no disease. In the name of Jesus, no condition. Oh my God! In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, my body functions perfectly and in order because that that is God's plan for me. In the name of Jesus, I receive wholeness, wholeness over my mind, wholeness over my spirit, wholeness over my body, wholeness over my heart, wholeness over my oh yes, over the structure of my body. Wholeness, wholeness. I receive wholeness. I receive wholeness. I walk in the totality of it. I walk in the totality of it. Yes. I walk in the totality of divine health. I walk in the manifestation of divine health from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. In the name of Jesus, I do spring that's called cancer. I bind you. I destroy your works. In the name of Jesus, you have no place in my life and you have no place in my family. In the mighty name of Jesus. We expel you from our family. We expel you from our blood. We expel you from the lives of our children. We expel you from the systems of our bodies. We expel you from the organs of our bodies. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we supernaturally flush our systems. In the blood of Jesus, flush every organ in our bodies. In the blood of Jesus, 
we flush up from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. We flush out poisons. We flush out toxins. We flush out anything of God, even our genetic makeup that wants so hope God, that wants so triggered. We flush you out with the blood of Jesus. We flush you out with the blood of Jesus. We are not afraid of you. We flush you out with the blood of Jesus. You will not take us out of our time. In the name of Jesus, we curse you, Father Lord. We curse I hope you're praying. We curse cancer. We curse cancer. Your affliction that is sent against the people of God, against humanity. We curse you from the root. We curse you from the root. We curse you to die in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you to heaven. Thank you that we stand strong. We stand hold. In the name of Jesus. Blessed the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And let a believer say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. It's a glorious day. I want to welcome the ministers of God here with us. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus. Blessings to your positive future and blessings to your soul. God bless you all. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And just have a good day. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. It's Jennifer, God bless you. God bless you. Blessings to you all. Blessings to you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, bless you. God bless you. Jesus name, hallelujah. And we thank God for watching. And this is Jesus name, because we don't know God bless you. As we don't know Jesus name, hallelujah. We have to look at prayer, and I think that it will stay on this, because that was how it is. Because when you, until you get an understanding of the essence of something, I don't think you should know it. Sometimes some people say, oh, we just, it, it's just, uh, yeah, I've heard it before. If you've heard it before and it's, and it's you haven't become it, we need to take care of it until we become that thing. Hallelujah. Uh, until it becomes part of our culture, until it becomes part of our lifestyle, because we have been called to a life. We have decided that we have been called to a life. We have not been called to engagements, we have not been called to events. We've not been called to um, theologies, you know, philosophies, ideas, uh, suggestions. We've not been called to gain knowledge, but we've been called to a life. So Jesus says that he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's, been, he's the way to God. He is the truth to the Father, and he's a life that we must speak unto the Lord. Um, it's when, I, when I got the revelation of that, that he, because we know as he was growing up, he was just would always put to people say, you know, what's the way to heaven? And no, it's not uh, Muhammad, it's not Buddha, it's not this. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But it was more than being quoted. It, it, it was his, it was given a description of the totality of his life to us. And so we begin to break down what is truth, what is the way, we do, what is life, we do not understand just that state of that people. We know that he's God, he lives in eternity. So every word that he speaks is beyond the letters. And that's why the spirit gives life to the word. But the, 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 the letter kills. Because when you just look at the letter, it's like four letter words, five letter words, it looks like empty. But when the spirit of God is in the word, you can stay on the word to revelation language. And it's almost like a book. Now I understand why certain ministers have stayed on certain words because every time you visit it, there's another layer that is before you. So you have to say, oh, that's a healing teacher, or that's a deliverance teacher, or that's a, a, a faith teacher. That's a, you know, people call people in different But it's really when God opens their eyes, every time they go to a particular word, there is layers. Because remember, God is telling you. He releases layers and layers and layers, and it, it's, it becomes a thing of I'm not moved 
until this thing is not just my reality, but it's also the reality of everyone that I'm sharing it with, until it becomes alive, until when I hear it, my spirit lips, just like when uh, uh, the baby in Elizabeth lived. When you hear it, you hear men of God say, I listened to this word until there was a day that the power in that word, I received impartation in that power. I received impartation from that message. I listened to it until I received the anointing of the man that I was listening to. It's like it came on me. The spirit of Yehudu said, the spirit of Elijah came on me. The spirit of Kenneth Hagin came on me. The spirit of this person came on me. It was because they kept listening and they kept listening and they kept listening until the revelation of the word that was released to them became a reality upon their lives and it's like it becomes a place where it's like you people need to come in here and see what I see come in here and let's let the Holy Spirit do his work in it because this thing is not just a word but it's a reality Welcome to this island. It's a reality. And God has been speaking to us. The focus of this year is on faith. But how could we have faith? Or how can we pray without faith? Because one of the primary assignments that is given to us is to empower and to teach people how to pray. So no one comes into this ministry and it's not a and their prayer life is not a faith. No one. No one including myself <laughs> no one comes into this place and their prayer life is not affected that's part of our primary assignment while we disciple people by the grace of God while we're teaching other areas the pray prayer has is the driving force prayer is the postman who can't receive something without the postman coming to your door Faith activates it, but prayer becomes that person, that, that thing that delivers. And it's, you know, for us, it's a life, it's life. Prayer is not just a thing that we do. And God is dealing with the religious side of our understanding of prayer. And it's bringing us to a place of understanding that this is essential for our daily living. It is, it's like, I cannot, you and I should not do without prayer. And I hope you understand when I say you should not do without prayer because by now you should not, I'm not saying get locked up in one room 24 hours and you're praying. When prayer becomes a lifestyle, we do it wherever we are. I was driving home today and I was praying in my car. Sometimes I'm just stirred up wherever I am and I begin to pray. Before I started the meeting, I had a time of prayer within myself, between myself and the Lord. So it's not a thing where you are like, I have to go to a prayer meeting and just keep praying. You can be walking on the road, but there's an engagement. There is a, there is a weakness in your heart. I heard a man of God said, as soon as there's a, there's a weakness in your heart, wherever you are, just pray. Just pray the Holy Spirit. You know, some people say, well, I have to be, my mind has to be right. My emotions have to be in the right place. I can't pray this. You better just pray in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. There's some things that you need to cut off. Some unnecessary, I use the word unnecessary protocols, or cut off some religious protocols. Religious, I'm not saying the Holy Ghost one, because when we come to him, we must confess our sins before the Lord. So that prayers are not hindered. Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we make God alive. The truth is not in us. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I have to be, I have to be on my knees. I have to be in this quiet place. My mind has to focus. Yes, all those things are important. But if there is an emergency, are you going to say, wait, wait, everybody just wait? I have to be with you. Better just cry out to God wherever you are. Create that call to Father. It's you and me. I've never seen my children understand protocol when they want to access my presence. Whether I'm on the phone, whether I'm praying, whether I'm sleeping, whether I'm awake, whether I'm in the bathroom, when they want to reach out to me, nothing stops them. And until you see God as your father, not that you dishonor him, but you have a relationship with him where you just cry out. 
you know, I've told you people the story that when I was growing up, sometimes I just say, Mom, I just want to shout your name. Some parts I don't shout. And I'll go outside, I just shout my mother's name. I'm sure it's sweet in the heart. But it's just like, you just, it got to a point where she made this song about this, her, her daughter. Because the relationship that we had, it was, it was like, this girl is like, you know, <laughs> she doesn't joke. She, he, he, I mean, I remember there was a time when it's, uh, I think it was this conversation about key go key, my sister knows about it. And the other ones were like, giving, I said, I'm not giving it to you. I'm not. <laughs> Are you? We're not having that conversation. Because it's the relationship that one has with someone. It was not out of this manner, but I was like, no, this one is not happening. No one's going to call me out to the medicine. No, but I have to have access to you when I need to have access to you. There's no restriction between you and me. That was the end of the conversation. We need to have that relationship with our father. You need to see him as your God, as your father. Wherein there's no restriction. If you need to spend five hours with him, no problem. If you need to spend 30 minutes with him, no problem. There should not even be a conversation about time. Because when you have a relationship with someone, there's no time restriction. Is it the right time? Is it the wrong time? Is it the middle time? Just reach out to him. He just wants us. That's why he's abiding in us. He's abiding in us. So there's no limitations. But do we have an understanding of that? Until we get an understanding of why God is calling us to prayer, we will not be able to pray effectively. We will not be able to pray without season. We will not be able to pray consistently. We will not be able to pray persistently. We will not be able to pray even when we are constrained. God will not be able to stretch us in the place of prayer. Oh, hallelujah. I know that when he starts me off with this, like this, we're not going to stop. We're not going to finish it today. But it's still okay. But wherever he allows me to stop, we will continue. We will continue until we get the essence of it. Until we get the depth of it. Until when you open up your mouth to pray, you leave with a peace of God that passes all understanding. That is keeping your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Because no believer should get into the presence of God and leave there with a heavy heart. No one should get into the presence of God and leave here feeling lost and, and like, Lord, I feel hopeless. Ah, I, don't, I don't even know what, but I pray. No, because we're not approaching a man that is limited, that doesn't know what they're doing. We're approaching the sovereign Lord. <laughs> with him, all things are We approach the sovereign God. Oh, there's no limit in there. So why is prayer essential for everybody? Why is it so essential? Because if it wasn't for the prayers of the saints that gave themselves unto the some versions said they pray constantly. From Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Some versions said they pray constantly. What is constantly? Can somebody tell me what constantly means? Come on, let's do this very quickly. I'm limited to time. Constantly, put it on the chat. What does give me another one for constantly? Every time, thank you. Every time. Another version said they prayed very earnestly with all their heart and mind and soul, with no restriction, frequently, thank you. With no restriction. No restriction. I'm tired, but God, I'm, 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 I'm praying enough. 
let me rest with myself. They prayed constantly, even in their sleep. I was, I lay down to sleep yesterday. Something was on, you know, and, and we finished. And then I was about to, I was, I was trying to sleep, and, and the sleep was not coming. And I just put something on, something else on. And I was praying until I slept, and people didn't know that I slept. But I, it was like, well, I just put that on my bed, praying, I'm praying until I sleep. How constant! No restriction. Because now I'm sleeping, I should lie down to pray. I should make me on my knees. I should stand up to walk about my room. You can do all of that. But when it says constantly, it means I can be in the kitchen and I'm praying. It means I can be in my front room and I'm praying. It means I can be in my garden and I'm praying. It means I can be in my car and I'm praying. It means I can be at work. Sometimes in the middle of conversations, I hear tongues come out. I don't do it intentionally. I really don't do it to you. Constantly, your spirit is, is just alive in God in prayer. That's where God wants us to be. Because there's an enemy that doesn't have holidays. There's an enemy that's working in the spirit, by the way. That's not limited to human flesh. Sometimes we say, well, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's an enemy. Jesus told us there is an enemy. He didn't lie to us. And I've told you when Jesus speaks, you better pay attention. They prayed persistently, which means they did not do it. They prayed strenuously, which means it was out of their convenience. It wasn't out of their time. There were certain constraints. Maybe hunger. Maybe it was hot. Maybe it was cold. Maybe they had children. Married. Who knows? Maybe they had to go to work. Because they had to eat. And they believed in what? God had stopped giving them money. But they prayed straight for which means sometimes maybe they had to leave work, go to prayer, leave prayer, go to work. In the midst of the prayer, they will sleep and they wake up praying and say, okay, you stay here, let me go out and let's do this one so that can be covered. When I come back, you go out. It was like everyone gave themselves like God. They will not stop whether it's convenient or it's not convenient until we see your heart. They prayed intensely. Another person said they never stopped. When he said they never stopped, he meant he went all around the clock. They prayed without stop, without sit. And why is it so essential for us? Because number one, prayer helps us or aids was part of our communication with God. And can I boldly say, even if you don't communicate with me, make sure you communicate with the Father. Please. <laughs> if you are not communicating with me, it's okay. As long as you are communicating with God, that is important. That is important. It's a place where we don't just come communicate our needs because many of us have made prayer or the needs and our needs of purpose of prayer. So when we don't have needs, we don't have we don't see the need to pray. And that's what happens in that. People see us. I had a friend of mine who said. I don't need prayer, I don't need God because it's for those that are poor. God is for those that are poor. So people see God as, well, it's because that person is sick, that's why they pray. So I, I, I mean, I remember when somebody had asked my sister, like, why are you doing praying like this? And then we had somebody else ask another woman of God, like, why is someone praying like this? She just, you have a problem. And when that spread the sickness was made, I laughed because I remember somebody else had asked that question, why are you guys praying like this? Because there's a problem. So we've only attached prayer to problems. And so when 
it's almost like we don't have a need. We don't see the need of people. When my problem is not as bad as the other ones, I mean, like that thing, like, it's, prayer is not about your problems. Prayer is about communicating If you had a child who would only come to you when there is a problem, as a parent, or you had you are in a relationship with somebody that's only talking to you when there is a problem, would you value that relationship? Would you enjoy that relationship? In fact, when they call you, you people want to have this. So you know that this, they only come to know there's a problem. They only reach out because there's a problem. What's the problem again? They may even come resentful. Okay, just take me the answer and just go. Because you're not you're not interested in our relationship. All you're interested in is what you can get from. You hear people say, all your person is interested in is what they can get from. They're not interested in our well being. And how do we check on God's well being? What's your will? What would you have me do to you? Let your will be done on earth as it is. Is there somebody you want me to reach out to? Is there somebody you need me to pray for? Because he needs us. God, just the way you need God, God needs us to enforce his will on earth. So we are, we are not in communication with him. How do we know his will? How do we know what he wants us to do as sons? Because as sons of God, while we enjoy the benefits, we also have responsibilities that we must do. Every child, in every family, every individual, the father has a responsibility. We're not talking now about people who don't take responsibilities. And that's why we actually, you know, like resent people who don't take up their responsibilities. Because if everyone is doing their part, the family balances are much more, and functions are much better. Because the weight is not just on one person. The bills is not just on one person. The care and the love is just one person. And when a scale is not balanced, what happens? It falls off. So prayer is much more than our needs. It's much more than when we're in trouble. It's much more than when somebody else is in trouble. It's a time when we use to also express our gratitude. Time when it's, 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 it's a means of communication when we also express our worship when we confess whether there's our shortcomings, our sins, our weaknesses, just communication. It sustains we have an understanding, purpose of fact, it enjoys staying with the lost count of time. And that's what we saw happen to Moses. He went up to the mountain, according to the person's prayer. There's no way in the scripture that tells us he was, he went up and said, I'm going and I'll be back after they waited. In fact, they got tired of the same way. It's like, it's gone, it's not coming back. Let's make ourselves a contribution. We don't know what he's doing up there. Why is it taking so long? That God was doing something. Do we enjoy the Are we demonize it so much when we get there? It's all you don't see, you don't see his glory, you don't see, you don't see anything of him, or just like, oh, kill this one, buy that one, destroy that one, you know. And it's just about all those things that when you truly get into the presence of God, when you look at the, the, the way that the temple was built, you get to a place where it's called the Holy of Holies, where it's all about his presence. Have we got to that place for all we see? The song has said, all oh, this is Have we got to that place? It's a place of strength, reflection. Have I got to that place in my life, in my prayer life, in my relationship? 
and all grace is you. And if we haven't got them, it's the place where we must desire to be. All we see is you. Can I give us a second? As I'm speaking, I'm not speaking. That's in the faith and God to And he saw so much in God's His presence, his strength, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. My God, he, he, that's where he was. In fact, he was a channel. That's where he was that made him, but unfortunately, um, says iniquity was found in his mind. Made him say, what a beautiful thing. I want to sit where he sits. That's, that's, that, that's a wrong motive to be in the presence of God. We know that. But that's where Satan got you to. I said, I want to rise at the way he rises. I want to sit where he sits. He just wanted to be like. But God does not want us to have that wrong motive. But he wants us to get to the place where all we see is him. Which is a place of intimacy. Where he sees himself into us. He pours himself into us. We behold his glory. When he looks at us, he sees his reflection in us. That's what prayer helps us. That's why it's so essential that we pray. Or it's not just that we pray, but that we pray about it. We pray with understanding also. We get into his presence with the right foot. We get to a place where all I'm just reminded about what happened when Solomon built the tabernacle. Out of my notes, but I know that that count is there. Somebody can find it for me. When he built the tabernacle and he offered unto the Lord a thousand sacrifices of bulls and, and all the all the all the animals that they did, the glory of the Lord the Bible says that the priests were on their face. They were literally on their face because the glory cloud filled the temple. When the glory does come, there's no time for us to see anything like that again. And He wants us there. He wants us there. He wants us to receive the weight of what he's called us to. And so John chapter 15 verse 17 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Jesus started that. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. If you stay in me. We often quickly move to the, then you can ask, what have we? Are we abiding in him? Is he living in us? Is his word living in us? Can we? Have we got to a place where we know that with us? It's not just a statement that we know, but true. God's living. Truth. I can hear it. Truth. I can see it. 
a record. There's an evidence of transformation in your life because we are abiding. And abiding is not just to say, I mean, no one, no one counts God and remains the same. So there is evidence of transformation. Christ is truly in me the hope of God. There's a difference. Not a religious difference. There's an evidential difference. Christ is in me. Because it's through the abiding. That we can now ask. And it will be done. Are we able to sustain the pieces of God on us? On the road. No one is pleasure to And God come to me. And we say the presence of the Lord is true. Even when we're celebrating. That's what we desire. Another essential of prayer is that it deepens our relationship with God. It doesn't just aid our communication, it deepens our relationship with And that's part of what I was just sharing with you. It deepens our relationship. Deepens our desire. We hunger and thirst for you. I remember there's a particular time in my life where I was going through some things, you know, that as a young person, you you were looking, looking for sometimes just the process of the day of Jesus. And I remember friends. After the experience, you just need to get back to the I can still see where we were parked. She said, You just need to get back to the was the best advice I think I've ever ever given to my time. Exactly. You know, there are times when you need to be reminded that advice that she gave you. just need to get back to the present. And I remember going. Looking at you for you are in place where you think it exists. Just looking for the best Just looking for answers where you can find. Just the best thing about it is God makes them. Whatever I can do, it's just. And what that moment did for me that time. Spending time with God I was quite young before I met. I would say the way that the Holy Ghost just embraced my entire life in that season, it was like I felt that like what we read from the old father and the and the and, and the son that looked the son that said. My son was satisfied. It was like the welcome back to my Like I've been waiting for you to go back to it. A very fulfilling time. Just making that decision to desire him. And making him my all. He feel the gaps of his eyes and mine. I didn't have to sit around you now. We have 
好听的 music， 都在他。Those moments can also be our reality. We just have satisfaction in it. You know, every part of my position that I was happy with, but says it's not very. How satisfied I am! You know. You know that. But it's only through a deepening relationship that you can truly say, Lord, I truly find satisfaction in you. David said from Psalm 63, verse 1, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek my soul first. I want to lose in a dry and weary land where there's no water. How thirsty are you? How thirsty are we? I pray that the Lord is speaking to you. This, this, shifts us into a place where even if you had it, you would desire more, because no one has ever been able to get it. Even if we need to get to another dimension, you take us to another dimension. Because look at, <laughs> I, I mean, when I look at the life of John. Through his love for the Lord, through the way that he gave an account of himself, was my thing. Apart from the persecution, apart from the fact that he tried to, he had that encounter with the angel of the Lord. But Jesus Himself showed Himself to him by His Christ Himself that showed Himself. Again, when he saw this image of Christ with his hair as white as wool, his eyes like flames of fire, was an angel. I mean, he just saw him like, wow. Jesus revealed that John is my look like. Oh my God. And after that revelation, the Lord said to me, He said, pull him up. I can show him easily. We must get to that place where the things that we put up is that to say, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, bring up. Open up. Give her ease to things to Can only happen through a deep relationship. Can only. I must stop. I believe people must do that still. And I will continue. Why is prayer essential? Because it leads us for that. And it goes beyond that. We communicate gratitude. We communicate thanks. We communicate worship. We just communicate. The needs are also important, but it's not its own. And number two, the deep needs. Father, you design this to come up from God's who wants us to come up.
Remember the word that was released that God responses to our school. He responds desires. And if we desire more of it, he responds to our choices. First season. If you desire more of him, more of himself. The people that see what we don't see say desire more of himself. Not because they're more special than me. He all wants you. You know, the message is keep me up that I can remove the hands. Because he wants to feel that. But if we don't want him, don't keep what the Spirit of God is saying. They will miss it. a deeper relationship. If you're here tonight and you desire a deeper relationship, speak to me. Where would this be so much? Show me. Where would this be so much? Show me. I desire a deeper relationship. I want to know you. Not just to know, but to be in covenant, true relationship. There is no back to life. I have to go through this whole process for me to know that, oh, yeah, now I'm the person. Oh, now the person is the person. Oh. Want to constantly abide in your presence by sleeping in my bed. Want to be able to walk this conscious of you being with me. Helps. If you're that person that has desired a deeper relationship with me, tell him to go that desire. And you can never get deep. So maybe you already have a deeper relationship with me. You can say, Lord, I want more. Is there more? Let's go. In the name of Jesus. Father, you keep speaking. Because you love us. I'm speaking to us. I hear the song that says, Just close up. You just don't have to close it. Just don't have to close it. Help us not to hear what you say. Help us to see what you say. Help us to understand what you say. This world will just go by a little bit. Just be a moment where it's like this, God, and then we leave the space and we forget all of that. But your presence would indeed abide. And we would abide with you. The world would abide. In the name of Jesus. Rando Bash. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Monday Robo Shana. His strength is right now, even in his presence. His fullness of joy. Their strength in his presence. Those who wait for the Lord use their strength. Use their strength. Oh, they have that shit. Pray 
it is our Lord. Oh, we desire more of you, Lord. Oh, we desire to walk with you, Lord. Where your voice will be known, your voice will be recognized, your presence will be recognized, your word will be recognized. In the name of Jesus, O Rande Nabari Kazeta, O Rande Nabosha, Ayetetete. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for pulling us up. Yes. Thank you for pulling us up. Thank you for opening the eyes of understanding. Lord. Thank you for taking up the veil from our minds, our minds. Thank you for giving us ears to share. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the eternal life that you have promised. Orande de lo shara bara, orande de lo pura mzeka kusha. Oh, thank you for the life of the remains. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you. Jesus, let it be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.